Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about a very common medication that is prescribed to millions of Americans, and it's also available over the counter. We're talking about antacids, acid blockers, right? What are they? Right? Basically, these are medications that are used or supposed to be used temporarily to help people who have symptoms of reflux problems, right? Burning, indigestion, and so forth. So when we look at this, the truth about the acid blocking medications is this, right? It's meant to be used for gastroesophageal reflux disease, right? Burning in the chest and so forth. Or sometimes something called Barris esophagus because of chronic uh, reflux disease. The, the typical sensations you're gonna get is that, that burning, sometimes worse at night when you're trying to sleep, you lie down and you feel it up in your chest. Uh, so you can mistake it for um, a heart attack because you get chest pain. Oftentimes you get bloating and the sensation of fullness. You can't digest your fats and proteins, right? It's supposed to be used temporarily to manage uh, these types of symptoms. Actually, the manufacturers recommend about 16 weeks uh, of use. So no more than 16 weeks, let's say. However, when patients do come into our office, they're on acid blocking medications for years. So what happens when you're on acid blocking medications for years? Well, you have to understand when you block acid, which is hydrochloric acid in our stomach, what it, HCL, what hydrochloric acid actually does is it helps to kill harmful bacteria and the food. So you ever go to a restaurant and you get a salad and that salad comes out? How many times do you think they rinse that salad and make sure it's clean, right? Not very much. Not many restaurants would do that. Pretty much comes out of the bag, one little rinse and boom, on your table. Now, this salad probably has bacteria on it. However, if you have proper levels of HCL with digestive enzymes in our, in our system, it will just kill off the harmful bacteria and there's no big deal. But there are some people who will take it or eat it and get food poisoning. So what does HCL do? It activates pepsin and pepsin basically breaks, breaks down protein. So if you have a protein meal, you need proper levels of HCL to help activate pepsin and it will break down your proteins. Another thing is secretin. It, and that signals pancreatic enzymes, right? Digestive enzymes that will break down your foods. Another thing is you have to maintain proper pH in the stomach. What's proper pH? 1.5 to 2, right? That's very acidic environment. And it, it has to maintain a correct pH for you to stimulate cholecystokinins. What that does is it breaks down fats. So essentially you need the acid as a trigger or a stimulus to produce other things in our body like digestive enzymes, um, things to break down our proteins and fats. So if you don't have proper levels of acid, you're not gonna get proper digestion either. And you're not going to kill off the harmful bacteria that can come into our body. So proper levels of HCL is very important for the maintain, uh, maintaining health. Remember, you could, you're could supposed to be really only using it short term, but people are using it for the long term and it becomes problematic. So when we look at it, acid blockers, right? Elevates pH, meaning it will increase the pH of your stomach above where it should be which is the optimal level of 1.5 to 2. So if your pH goes to 3 and 4, then it's too basic in order to kill off bacteria. One of the most common bacteria is H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori. Now that's a very common infection in the stomach, but that infection could also block stomach acid because H. pylori likes a basic environment. And then 
it perpetuates and creates problems with digestions of fats and foods, etc. And H. pylori has been uh, related to cardiovascular disease, uh, stomach cancer, and so forth. So this bacterial overgrowth is problematic. Also increases opportunistic bacteria, things like staph or uh, streptococcal infections, right? You can overgrow in our, in our GI tract. So your gut flora will become imbalanced. It doesn't have the, quite the balance that it needs, right? So it cannot kill off bacteria on the foods also, right? So why do like two people go to the restaurant and one person gets sick eating the same food? That person probably doesn't have the proper level of stomach acid to break down or kill off the bacteria in the food. So if you have low stomach acid or if you have um, where your pH of your stomach goes above two, it's going to decrease absorption of nutrients because you can't break it down, right? And one of the most common things is osteoporosis or bone loss. So if you're on antacids for five years, six years, 10 years, your risk for osteoporosis goes up significantly. As a matter of fact, it's probably one year of acid, antacid use and you will start to develop osteo osteopenia, right? Some bone loss. You have to remember that bone is turned over every seven to 10 years, meaning completely turned over. So if you have acid blocking medications and you're taking it for seven years, you're losing bone, right? You're not developing the bone that you should over that time frame. Another thing that people don't realize is you develop food allergies. Why? Because if you don't digest the foods properly, protein that should be broken down into its amino acids cannot break down and therefore the sequencing of the protein is larger than it needs to be and sometimes the large proteins will cross into the bloodstream creating an immune response for food allergies you know the typical foods that are you know, people have the most problem with is gluten dairy uh, lectins and nightshades but if you have food reactions to a lot of different things, think about increasing stomach acid or improving stomach acid. So optimal pH is 1.5 to 2. If you go above that and you become more basic, you're gonna have problems uh, in terms of killing off bacteria, more susceptible for infections, um, not breaking down the nutrients and developing osteoporosis. So it becomes a very vicious cycle. Remember, you're supposed to be on this medication for really no more than 16 weeks, but many people come in and they're on it for months and years. And it's a problem that a lot of people have. If you really think about it, it's available over the counter, right? What used to be prescription is now over the counter and then they become, they get a new one, right? That's prescription based. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, right? No one's telling you, hey, you shouldn't be on antacids beyond a year. Um, they just keep prescribing it or people are just going to the store and buying it whenever they feel like. And it's a big problem here in the United States. Okay. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.